Ladies and gentlemen, stream is now in session. Obi Wan, 362, Gamer Law presiding, and welcome. Yes, everybody, it is in fact happening. We are playing. I love you, Colonel Sanders. What will hopefully be a finger licking good dating sim. Vex, Panic, and Bundy, welcome to the courtroom. How you all doing? Bundy, thank you so much for the 13 months. That I realize you're now regretting, but you know, that's not my problem. No refunds. Um, will Bubbles be providing voices? Bubbles will not be. Um, Bubbles is not feeling, not feeling too hot. So... She's, she is around just long enough to see what this nonsense is, and then she is going to go, go to Betty, bye, go, go sleepy time in Betty by land. Nappy poo in Betty by land, that's what the line was. So, all right, everybody, look at the colonel. Just look at him. So ready for this. Bundy, I'm so disappointed in you. You you even streamed today. You had the opportunity to play this, and you didn't. Alright. New game. Before you get started, tell us your name. Oh. Huh. My name? Honestly, I half expected it to... I expected it to, like, pop up with a virtual keyboard like this was a... Uh, like this was a mobile game. You don't want to look at him? What? Why wouldn't you want to look at him, Vex? Look at your colonel. Look at him. Oh, look at that drumstick. Mm, those biscuits. That's right. Will we butter his biscuit? Will we touch his drumstick? No, I'm done. All right. <laughs> you sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. Look at this. My favorite. Gosh, I love that chicken anime. <laughs> you guys are fine, alright? <laughs> La. Lost, welcome to the courtroom. How you doing? <laughs> why? Why Why wouldn't I? Because it would be a missed opportunity for me not to do that. That's why. <laughs> or you can wake up now. Wake up now, now, now. First day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. That's a terrible... <laughs> A terrible sound. What if we made it an alert? Smack that clock up and at him. Throw the clock out the window to stay in bed forever. We slept through the school year and gave up on the once in a lifetime opportunity to meet Colonel Sanders. We did it, guys. We did it. We speed ran that game. We finished it. <laughs> so for those of you at home playing the home game, um, if you say throw the clock out the window, um, you just sleep forever and you miss the school year and you miss your opportunity to beat the Colonel Sanders. 
they were joking when they first said they were making this. I know, I know, but it's a real thing. Okay, let's try that again. Mmm, biscuits and chicken. Look at those tender, juicy thighs. <laughs> Bubbles is just glaring at me. <laughs> Panic, no! Panic, no! Should have disabled all ability to make quotes during this. Make what KFC? Yeah, yeah. I, if we weren't already meeting, I hadn't met friends for dinner, I absolutely would have been like, Bubbles, I'm bringing home a bucket of chicken. We're eating chicken while we play. <laughs> KFC just terrible these days? I, you may be just, you're just going to the wrong KFCs. All of your KFCs might be terrible. There's the sound again, guys. Smack that Glock up and at him. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. That is the worst name for a school I've ever heard in my life. mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by. You find your imagination getting away from you. <laughs> I was gonna just say we just daydream a bit, but Bob was like, no, take it seriously. All right. I'd better make sure to arrive prepared for the first day. You bust through your morning checklist. Teeth equal brushed. Hair equals combed. Pits equal deodorized. Nothing can stop you now. Unfortunately, a lot of the restaurants, the chicken is too greasy for my stomach to handle. That's fair. KFC mac and cheese is best fast food mac and cheese. Where else has what other fast food has mac and cheese? Chick Fil A, Popeyes does, doesn't it? So only the chicken places. The chicken places are the only ones. Okay. You confidently grab a biscuit, straight out the door, and head off to class. Just what you needed to get your butt blood flowing. Nope, I have to stop. I, have to, I can't do it. Because it tastes worth it. <laughs> All lost. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. to clog your arteries. No, the biscuit's not going to clog your arteries. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. I don't know why, but I really wanted and was expecting and was hoping for voice acting. I really wanted them to have gone there. Good morning, Obi. You excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Uh, actually, I'm... Because I sure am! Excited, a little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot nervous. What's the... It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but, well, when I ate it, I, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Don't, don't cry, Miriam. Dry those tears. Dry them. Use, here, just 
take your take your little pigtail and like or your little braid and just try try your eyes. Classic Miriam. Raised by Master Chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together, and you rescued me from that quicksand box. Okay, we're 11 minutes into this, and I have so many questions. <clears throat> it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great. <laughs> with the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning's famous three-day only semesters. I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. Three days! Jeez, I thought my summer courses were intense. You know the KFC has a budget for that? They have the budget for it. <laughs> Matt and Mercer versing the colonel. <laughs> A sweet girl, Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. <laughs> Look on Bubble's face. Should you pep talk her? Or change the subject to give her some relief. Uh, give her a pep talk. She could do it. Remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and had our tarot cards read? Mm. Lay with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. Huh. You no, know, she looked spooky. She was so sweet and she told you that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy looking tower? And that other card featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit? waiting for so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. And I'm sure you will soon. In no time we'll be graduating in literally three days. And you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. So you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. Yeah, sure. Can you believe I cut them myself? Yes. Yes, I can. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna be able to drink this. You can definitely believe it. I was <laughs> that child showing her face on that mannequin. Look, look, you have to be passionate. Passion requires force sometimes. I, uh, I cannot believe it. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Those were a gift from Great Grandma Obi. How could you? Hey! It's... I'm gonna guess it's Ashley but that is the worst spelling of that name. Like, they literally took all the ways to overcomplicate the spelling of the name, shoved it into one, and was like, there you go, enjoy it. It's Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants, and she knows it. Hello, Ashley. Oh my gosh, she has drumsticks on her drumsticks. Uh, amazing. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. That's just rude. Also, you literally have chicken on your thighs. You leave Obi's shins alone. They are perfectly normal shins. Thank you, Mario. Ugh, can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone else. Thank you. 
knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. What? What does that even mean, Miriam? What are you even saying? I'm not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us, even though Bubbles really approved of it. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Von Von the Man Man. That was a perfect music break has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're they're rocking glutes. I'm just I'm just reading what it says. It's not my fault. Ahem. Van 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 Oh dear goodness. Ugh. Are you rang rang? You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. That sounds right. Legend says that circulation is being completely cut off from the waist down. Looks like a JoJo character. Yeah, that, sure. I haven't seen JoJo, but what I've seen of people from it, that sounds like an accurate representation. Can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to attend as students. I know, right? You think they just hand us our diplomas now? The worst. Or maybe hire us on as professors? You amateurs can learn a lot from us. The first day of school about to start, there's just no time to probably tell these two off, so you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. Uh. Psh, see you later, losers. As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing a hard against the window directly next to it. Ha. Uh, that sound effect. What is that shirt he's wearing? Look. Look. Ha. Uh. Oopsie. Did you make a poopsie? I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. He's got a little ghost coming out of his mouth. Someone grab his soul. Grab his soul, put it back in. Uh, that should do the trick. I love you. Oh no. I've romanced the wrong character. We've only just begun. No! Think you mean thank you? My name is Pop. Are you sure your name's not Poop? Because that's the first thing you did when we walked up. Which is rip a new one. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. So it's gonna be this kind of game. All right. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one a heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob Bob or Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. <laughs> this game's amazing. Hi, Pop. I'm Obi. So, 
You gonna you gonna make me hold this door all day? Nope. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Aww. Is it just me or is he kind of cute? It's just, I think it's just you. It is just you. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. I, I want to I want to click the chicken bucket. All right. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in, keep themselves busy chit-chatting. A scruffy-looking pooch takes his place at a podium at the front of the class. Adorable. Now, now, quiet down, everyone. His name is Sprinkles. Oh my gosh, he was driving that car we saw earlier. Oh my gosh. The we saw we saw a car earlier today that was said uh was I sprinkle. Oh my gosh, it was this dog. The dog was driving. It all makes sense. It's all coming full circle. Who is this unreasonably cute pup and why is he in our culinary class? Must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. Yep, I don't know why they had to do this to us. Please, call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Woof. See? Just imagine this game with voice acting, with some professional voice actors having to read this nonsense. It would be glorious. What? Cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever. Oh my gosh, this character is me. All right. Guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. I mean, look, I can, I can deal with that anime logic. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. <gasps> it's time. It must be time. I'm chilly. Someone close this window. And then, he walks in. <laughs> Look on Bubble's face. <clears throat> You're immediately s <laughs> her face. You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands. It's him! It's... <clears throat> if it isn't my favorite student, Harland... Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. I'm sorry, Professor Dog. Where you can finish the sentence. Shoot, what kind of voice are you used for the Colonel? Can I do a really bad Kentucky accent? Like all the commercials, all the KFC. Please call me Colonel. <laughs> it feels it feels so broken with the art style, and I think that's the best part. Colonel Sanders. A hush murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you. You're not entirely wrong. <sighs> and this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. 
Maybe we should open the window back up before faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. Hold on just a second. Nobody talks to my friend like that. But you both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. What is with you and all your really weird insults? Besides, when Obi sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. That's weird. Look at that shimmer. Huh. That... I like how they like it, they make it a button, but there's not an option to not do it. Okay, so just the menu. Okay. It's a good thing you didn't forget about that deodorant this morning. This classroom is hot, hot, hot. Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and set some ground rules. Welcome to the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even be really adorable tiny things. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and compete in the broom cooking arena. He is so fierce. Look at his ferocity. Look at... Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Hi, guys. Sorry I'm late. Hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss... Quiet! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Yeah, you look like you're an extra in a thriller music video. Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school with you as my teacher. Bless you, Alice. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm. You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. <laughs> this dog is so cute. Look at him. Let that be a lesson to you students that tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. <laughs> Turn to see the students, Sprinkles is referencing. There appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. Oh, okay, he gets voice acting. Concerned, do concerned, do concerned, do concerned. <laughs> Class bursts into laughter. Oh, Clank, you rascal. Spinkrose walks in the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm. Your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. Never had a dog, a talking dog, as a teacher before. But Sprinkle's reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket. But what kind? Like, are we even able to say anything other than chicken snack? Given the game, can we say anything other than chicken snack? Or is that why we can't say chicken snack? Because we have not yet had the Colonel's chicken snack. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, come on down to KFC. Get yourself a chicken snack 
for that pesky pup who is also your teacher. You reach beneath your apron and return with a chicken sack in your hand. Circle's eyes go wide as he locks onto it. His favorite! Too easy. Too easy game. Well, well. <clears throat> Sorry. Well, well, well. I think there might be some competition for a new star student. That's right, I am. The furry professor immediately devours a snack, leaving your hands slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. So now we're ready to cook. See the other students eyeing you jealously. Pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of doggy treat flavors on them at all times. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, enough standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Obi, there's still a seat here! Well, it seems no one has claimed this seat next to me, if you're interested. Uh... Sit by Colonel Sanders? Or sit by my best friend? So torn. Should we play hard to get? I think we should play hard to get. Should be not that one, obviously. Watch. Click sit my best friend. You sit by your best friend. You never run into Colonel Sanders again, and you die. <laughs> Move to take your seat by Miriam. I'm so glad you're <laughs> to have you near me to support me through this class. Of course. You're my best friend. Who else would I sit by? Colonel Sanders? He has such a magnetic personality. There's a seat open right next to him. If you had sat there, you might have gotten to know him a little better. I never sacrifice our friendship. Besides, I'm sure I'll get a chance to talk to him later in the semester. We've got three whole days. That's like a lifetime. So you say, now that Mary mentions it, that Colonel Sanders is just so darn dreamy. As soon as you've settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast! It's time for a pop quiz! Yay! Quiz about me! <laughs> Poor dog. This is an incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz. Will tell me if you are ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question number one. If train A is traveling to point B, and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash our hands before cooking? <laughs> Man, it depends. Right? Like, it's not, it's not that important, right? Arguably, if you don't do it, that's just another flavor that you're introducing to the dish. Extremely. I'm gonna chew pop. That's right. Forest is to tree as chicken is to nugget. Uh, a slam dunk. Night vision goggles. Forest is a tree as chicken is to night vision goggles. A necessary part. Feather. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A comically oversized fork? It's a good choice. A meat tenderizer. But the truly most efficient eating utensil ever created is the spork. 
Of course, because you can eat both s solid foods that require a fork and soup. Look at you, Bundy. That's right. What food is best for a broken heart? Anything as long as it is prepared with love and not too much salt. Camel meat. A pancake that looks like a silly face. I mean, look, when I'm down, camel meat is usually my go-to option. But I guess anything, as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. That's right. Is Sprinkles a good boy? <laughs> no, yes, he's a talking dog that teaches at culinary school. He is the best boy. That is correct. Five out of five, a perfect score. That's right, that's right. Did I pass? Did I get to graduate culinary school? Well, I'll be honest, did you cheat? You look up to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. He's impressed. Well, I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. Hot diggity, Obi. You just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch! Wow, the cafeteria isn't as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. Delicious fragrance wafts through the room, tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Do you smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? Oh, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Uh, Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. <laughs> Howdy, folks. Colonel Sanders here. And I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. Lunch! Yay! But I... I... Shh! <laughs> lunch! 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 She said shh. Dang it, Pop. In honor of the new semester, I've prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Uh-huh. That must be the smell I smelled! Indeed. That smell. Look at him! Someone needs to carve that out of marble. Put it in a square. Hey guys, guys, I figured out our next Minecraft build. <laughs> Pose is over here copying the, the pose. It was adorable. Looked perfect. Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath. Waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented. But were the rumors true? Is this? Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. It's all the oil. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken. Breaded and fried to a crisp. gonna build a Colonel Sanders or a KFC yes we're gonna we're going to build a Colonel Sanders in front of the KFC that we're going to build obviously the aroma envelops you you begin to feel warm and safe Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket 
With chicken? What a novel concept. Your stomach begins to grumble, as if to say, Stop thinking and start eating. For years, I've been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper is scribbling notes as fast as they can, despite the fact that all he said so far is you need 11 herbs and spices. Or technically he said no less. But that's all I'll say about that. What? You think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Pshaw. Nah, my dude, nah. It's just, uh, drafting a last will and, t and testament in case, uh, one of those ingredients is, uh, poison! Got him. Let's try nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. Give me something I have to chew. I'm trying to read things. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up. She suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just like writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent. She slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness. And fame with cooking skills like this, she wants him all to herself. Oh, please. Hmm. Well, Van Van the Man Man, if you don't want any, I'll take his. Well, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes go wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Yeah, look at him. This nonsense. Even his hair is standing up. Easy now. There's enough. There is enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. And take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. Jeez. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Swim towards the light. Save the moment. And save the moment and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Focus your mind and meditate on this moment. Try and identify every flavor. Yeah, we're going to try and discover it. You let the food rest in your mouth and focus on it, scrutinizing every flavor. Salt? Maybe? I mean, maybe salt. There's salt in there. Pepper? Too obvious. Oregano? Basil? Maybe, but there's something else. Something dark. Something spicy. You dig deeper. 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 Yes, even deeper still. Until you find it. 
Could it be? Are you kidding me? How dare you? How dare you, game? It's nothing. That's a white box. Huh? It's nothing. It's a white box. He really did it. How bold. How adventurous. To use. Was that mayonnaise? Like, what else is that white? Whipped cream? Those are the only things I can think of that would be... That's classic in fried chicken. Buttermilk. Also, buttermilk is slightly yellow. White milk. As opposed to what? Green milk? Balls would like for it to be known that uh, it's clearly white milk instead of getting the chocolate milk from those chocolate cows. Try to go even deeper into the sea of flavors, but this revelation alone is more than you can handle. You snap out and realize that this information was meant to remain a secret. And yet, now you know. A mantle of responsibility now rests upon your shoulders. As you look around, you realize that everyone in the room is consumed by the lunch. No one noticed that you've traveled through space and time. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. Sanders, Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he is doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wonder if I could talk to you for a second? Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? Oop! <laughs> that face. That face. Well, it was a bit of my own sweat. Ha <laughs> ha! How bold to come out and ask! Oh my gosh! There's gonna be so many cosplays. So many people are cosplaying as Colonel Sanders. It's gonna be weird. But if they have the chicken cane, I'm all for it. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester's only getting started. We got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give it up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel? Shouldn't learning be fun? Oh, you got Moxie. I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone, and then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient. You can't tell. I use mayonnaise. It's something my great grandmother taught me. Does this mean OBS to go as Colonel Sanders for Halloween? No. <laughs> Bones was that face. Bubbles. I have to go as Colonel Sanders. She's gonna go as a giant drumstick. She's gonna go as an actual chicken. Oh, it's mashed potatoes. Mayonnaise! Wow. You never have guessed that. 
In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. I'm having I'm having I'm so confused. What like what is he using? Is he using like freeze dried sea urchin? Like what's happening here? That like whatever it is is so so rare. You don't even know you'd be able to find it. In Kentucky bluegrass? Like I don't know. And mayonnaise definitely isn't the flavor you tasted before. So now you're two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe. You don't tell Colonel Sanders that. Great. So this is actually a different one. How am I supposed to tell these are different white boxes? At least make the boxes different colors. This game's terrible. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. Find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. Sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Oh, with a big idea, try an additional, try an additional ingredient to really spice things up. Modest but thoughtful. Show your own strength. Um, let's go modest but thoughtful. Well. I just want to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. The flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Obi. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should head back inside. Next lesson starts soon. Now this looks like a place for a shokugeki. Step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Wait a second. Oh no! We have to show our stuff! We're about to totally blow it! You're not going to blow anything. Not yet. Still have two days left. Uh, except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena! For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you. But unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Excuse me. That is inappropriate. This is such a silly game. Yes. Yes, it is, Panic. Yes, it is. Hey, Colonel. Would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? team of two, that is. Me and you, if that wasn't clear. Want to be my partner? Oh. Well, sure, Obi. I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner. Oh, come on. Can I just keep giving him his sound effects? Oh my, two potential partners? I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. So you have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone in forever. Oh. Give her the pressure what do you want to ask me, Miriam's partner? Clank. 
Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. Yeah, okay, I already ate. Dot F? What? It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Look, guys, if you're gonna give him voice acting, make it consistent. Every time, not just every once in a while. Hold on there, fella. I don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face. There's something charming and earnest about him. Tissue? I hardly know you. <laughs> uh, why? Clank judders and a panel shakes loose. Get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Sure. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. All right, you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy, and you don't even need to cook it. You think octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind? Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. That's the thing right there. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes? <gasps> and gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please. Let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? Just, I'm trying to get that recipe, dang it. Just cooking partners, mind your own business. Gosh. Sanders' heart is my business. You better keep your fingers off of him, my man. Did someone call for me? Ugh. No, jeez, Van Van. Well, I'm over here crushing Obi's dreams. You're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That's the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into a boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh. Howdy there, Ashley. Man, man. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no. It looked like Obi was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. <laughs> I doubt it. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to get cock creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that is positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel, deep down, that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together, like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense. But one thing's clear, she's coming from Colonel if you don't watch out. 
game is absurd. Also, I don't know what this music is. Ash is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Uh, I did just bail on Miriam. So I don't know if it's fair to grab her for this. I'm here to learn and express myself via my cuisine, not bicker with prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? Turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders, Sanders chose me. Is that right? Business respects all fair agreements, from contracts to handshakes. I took on Obi as my partner for this activity, and I stand by it. Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has Obi's natural talent or their loyalty. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. You look for Sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis in their shirt, short but sturdy stature. Look down at your station and realize that in the tension moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Oh no. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very That, that music. It's, it's a dream. Truly, this is the potatoes of dreams. Oh, Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab a hold of it, but he doesn't immediately the two of you stand holding the same spork. And for that small moment, all the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, Set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage, without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid beautiful face. <gasps> fan, fan do something, do something! Scooping up a finger full, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, OB. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If we throw one more spoonful, you'd both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Wherever it lands? 
I sense a plot. Yeah, I has potatoes face. What? Vanman rushes back over. Covered dish in his hand. The frick? That is on a serving axe. Mashed potatoes with gravy, pathetic. In just a few minutes I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty, braised tentacle of octopus and my silky saltwater sauce. Plated on a battle axe and blade, forged by my supreme chef ancestors. You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have first bite, and you will all look on with envy. In every student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed. It may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It has been eaten. I uh, think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. Flameboy, welcome to the courtroom. How are you doing? Panic. Oh, it just happened to land on Ashley's bosom. Oh no. It killed him! Everyone step back! Don't take another bite! You look back at the plate. The rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment and is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie! I'm gonna make a poopsie! Tastes like poison! Tired classes gather to watch Pop's final moments. Shock is frozen in the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. Class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. The rock music has stopped now, Bubbles. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Um, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here! Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on! Follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's a dark and more than a little spooky. Especially since it's haunted now. No one's going to talk about the kid who literally just died. Look, they try to tell him not to eat it. Sanders looks like Markiplier. Like, I don't know if I'd go that far, but I see what you're saying. Colonel Sanders stands in the quads and neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today, before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great res representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Chasing them reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find it Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders, 
Yes, Obi? There's something I need to tell you. Uh -huh. Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since, I've been working toward that dream. Day and night, never stopping, never resting. Also lifting a lot of weights. Like, so many weights. Man, the game... You gotta leave me some jokes, game. Jeez. We should follow our dreams with all our hearts. That our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Ugh. Hey, no, I... You... Shut up! I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are you forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? Literally, he's a, he's a ghost now. Alright, the school is now officially haunted. You can't prove that. Hmm. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Poor, poor student. Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. <laughs> The Spork Monster is here to find a hero! What is currently even happening? Can anybody tell me? It's, I think it's gravy. I, uh, I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds! How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. I... <sighs> Spork Monster, how am I supposed to take you seriously? Oh, Bunda, you missed so much. We, did, we discovered two of the hidden spices in the Colonel Sanders recipe. Uh, a kid died, flame showed up. Um, we made mashed potatoes. We're told that the next place mashed potatoes landed, we were gonna have to eat them from there. So, color me surprised that mashed potatoes didn't go anywhere else. So I was like, that seems just like a perfect opportunity. Um, came out here, we're having a very emotional moment with Colonel Sanders, uh, and then got interrupted, not once, but twice. Be afraid, be very afraid, of me, because I am a monster, see? Is he rhyming on purpose, or is that just a coincidence? But before you discuss syntax any further... The turn-based fight sequence. Um. Uh, all right. This is happening. Also, did they did they rip this out of old Final Fantasy? Can they do that? Did they get attack. So to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love. Just one damage. Just. It just got real. Attack really upset Spork Monster. Alright, so it goes on the attack. Spit hot gravy at you. Damage. Attack. Cook with love. Spork Monster won't forget this. Spork Monster is really feeling threatened by your attack. Focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. Grow larger, more intimidating. How we respond? Uh, defend. Tr 
trepidation. Okay. What do you have between your and the mother? This is not happening. This is not happening. There's no quitter. It's buffed up and ready to rumble. You go on the attack once again. Uses you. Utilitensil! Get out of here! How dare you! How dare you do such a thing? You take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. Cook with love! Two pork monsters oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. Or who's going to have to clean that up? The invulnerable pork monster prepares for its ultimate attack. Rounded edge. Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. This game is gold. This game is pure perfection. Oh my goodness. A pot pie power pinch. I think he's going super Sanders. What even is this game? Exactly, Flamboy. What is this game, Bundy? What Flamboy is that? The best game ever. Pot pie power pinch does 10 damage. Spork Monster is defeated. You saved me. Injured Spork Monster spews steam into the night. Forget mercy, finish him. Let us spare this wretched beast. KFC doesn't even have pot pie? They did. Does KFC not have pot pie? Anymore? Might just be a only specific KFCs. Pinch your tamp down, you're disgusted at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize he's still a living creature, the pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast! Don't you dare come back for follow-up encounter tomorrow. This is Undertale, apparently. I won't forget this. I certainly won't be back like you said. This work monster scuttles off into the night. Defeat a monster left behind a special item. It appears to be a... F did first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. Last name to have signed it out is Borco. Hmm. Borco. That name sounds strangely familiar. Blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. It must have helped you get home. You're tired to say you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in. Tightly. Good night, my colonel. The Book of Magic Spells is from a public library. Look, why not? Or from the school's library, that's also possible. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there? 
instructing your <laughs> instructing your love <gasps> dreams are weird <laughs> what oh my gosh everybody's just writing please do it again Please show that animation again. Not gonna do it. Gosh dang it. You awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories? Or premonitions? Oh. Oh, Colonel. You lie in bed and stare at the ceiling. Think about the secret you discovered while tasting Colonel Sanders cooking yesterday. You can't believe he really used white milk. And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. So much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Where you can tell her about the encounter with the spork monster. She launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um... I think I might like Clank! Of course you do, Miriam. Dang it, Miriam. Sometimes I gotta tell you. No, Flame Boy. Bad. Bad Flame Boy. No. Like him? Like. Like, like? You know, it sounds like it's moving too fast. There's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. I'm so glad this is happening. Got to talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? Sure. No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to. It was also the it was also the convertible that he himself rode in front of the homecoming parade. He was the convertible that he rode in. That's weird. Yeah, I'm thinking of something, maybe something got lost in pressure cooker language translation there. Cause, oh yeah, Flint boy, you came in right, you came in right after we signed her, her partner. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders, coolest guy in school. Most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning? You're a thing now? We're... We definitely connected yesterday. <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Having the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. An idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why he tell me one of his secret ingredients? Are you gonna tell her that you know a second ingredient too? She discovered on your own. Oh, Clank was the convertible. Ah, all right. Bestie's eyes light up. Secret ingredient? Yeah, just said that a secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? You ever check to make sure you're alone before continuing? So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices! So why is she constantly posing? Because this is what KFC thinks uh, a dating sim looks like? 
and I'm not sure that they're wrong. Manny gave me some. Show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals. And if I did him a big favor, he'd have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. It was so nice. He even met me at the gate when I arrived. And when I cooked with them, a strange feeling came over me. The flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. You're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever. Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. But he would love to know more about new spices. She looks like she's spellcasting. Huh? Awkward people don't know where to put their limbs. Fair. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. So I only know the one ingredient. So I doubt it'd be much use to anyone. Please, please, please! It could mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or from Colonel Sanders. Uh, what do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret? Or share it with your bestie? I think it'd make more sense to like tell her the one that you figured out yourself. Tell her. Okay, I'll tell you, but it has to say secret. Miriam nods furiously. He told me that he uses white milk. Never would have guessed that, would you? Was that imagining such a thing? You figure that you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. Oh, sorry, flame boy. I'll take your input on the next one. However, she immediately turns around, does some th thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. Probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she's definitely not texting secrets to other people, Interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving at school. Gosh dang it, game. Betray the group, Colonel Sanders. Shh. Flame. Shh. Fear not, the Colonel will love me unconditionally forever. I want to say stand back and admire his majestic glory, but... leave our friend hanging like that? Oh, jeez. I'm tired. I don't know why. It's not even that late. Sanders' horse is truly a thing of beauty. Without ever acknowledging that he's being watched, he does a short horse dance without a horse dance before dismounting with a flourish. He then slaps the beautiful creature gently on its rear, sending it running free into the countryside. You're so struck by the sight of him that you lose the ability to speak coherently. Oh, I didn't realize anyone was watching. Don't worry, he knows his way home. Attempt to compliment Colonel Sanders, but the words don't come out exactly right. Mm -hmm. 
What a horseful beaut you have. I mean, what a horseful bow you have. Dang it. That's what I just said. Your good friend Miriam attempts to cover for you. Oh, oh, he just gets really nervous around people they like. Uh, what? This is not helping. Food poisoning or all night. It was gruesome. Should have seen it. Shoot. Because you only get a smile as if to say, situation handled. <sighs> that Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. Into the classroom, you can see your two rivals Ashley and Van Van are doing something bad by the way they're hiding you know it must be really bad good like counterfeiting recipes bad experimenting with restricted ingredients bad summoning a bad a demon bad Over Van Van's hulking shoulder. Sees you coming. Oh, whoa there, little one. Not sure you're ready to handle this. Uh. Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? say look like you're interested but really just try and get a closer look it makes the most sense You sit near the rivals, but leave your back turned to them. You can hear Van Van. There's something that sounds a bit like a magic spell. Every he notices you eavesdropping, try and cover your tracks and improvise excuse. <clears throat> it's time for class, and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Now nah, you've upset them. sure you know a good meal if it ate you. Ooh, burn. The best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. And sometimes ganache. But it doesn't hurt. Seems a little evil. Oh, goodness. Find a good look at what it was they were hiding, and you instantly recognize it. It's a book, just like the one you found after your, your encounter with the Spork Monster. Spork Monster. It's the same book that I found last night in the quad. Ash immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. <sighs> Shark, which time out? Look, it's famous as a family heirloom. Its contents are secret. Notice that they haven't just been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall. They're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. Uh, 
Ooh. You further you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. There you go, Flame Boy. There's Clank. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty feet. But, ugh. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts. Watch how... You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. <sighs> you think you're talking to I've never heard such language from a stand mixer. Looks like an oven, doesn't he? But I think Panic's probably right. It's probably a pressure cooker. Your mother has a stand mixer. That's right, you get him, Clank. Man Man jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks the Man Man, sending him flying across the room. <laughs> Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over for me. Must be over me. I'm not interested in either of them. Huh. And her stone is completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Ashley's adorable, and I hate typing out her name. Yeah, that's fair. Maybe I can help with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. <coughs> students! Students! Please take your seats. Apologize for my late arrival. Spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. So I'm here now. I'm hoping. Uh, I hope you're ready to learn. Oh, uh, it's for your dog belly. He loves it. He catches his breath, sprinkles, regains control of the classroom. Breath, sprinkles, regains control of the classroom. <laughs> Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. Time is. I'm sorry, guys. I'm like, I'm fading real quick. I don't know what's going on. You want to pay attention to the lesson. Truly, you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it's a chicken who first signed the name. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders. You miss most of the important parts. Come to Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. 
Well, LB, naturally this appears to be, appears to you to be a sample platter. Um, huh. I guess I'll take the dog biscuit. All right, that's fine. Shape it's baked and you assume the dog biscuit is a treat made by sprinkles. You have all his own culinary talents, perhaps? Jumps up and bites on your cooking apron. What kind of monster would steal a dog's favorite biscuit? Dang it, Panic, how could you do this to me? Such a tatters. The entire class looks in a horror as you fall unconscious from the embarrassment. Uh, I never even got to taste it. All the choices are bad, I don't believe you. Mm hmm. It's me. Fade into darkness. But something is there. The spork monster? Sporko? What are you doing here? No oh, shoot, you died. Basically. It's not your time, my friend. Your act of kindness has not been forgotten. You watch as your apron magically repairs itself. Not to live in embarrassment anymore. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, my friend. Wherever you are. Yeah, I'm good. Again, I'm... I'm fading. We're gonna try and get out of the classroom, then we're gonna call it a, a night. Because I just... I can't. I can't do it. A shimmering pepper. Bright colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way. So naturally, you reach out, grab it, eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. For a triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe. My friend. Ooh. Yeah. This guy again? Here to give you an important message. Ooh. Must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is. <coughs> or say, fulfill your destiny, all you must do is. <coughs> Sorry, I think I've got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine, I'll work through. <coughs> to fulfill. <coughs> the prophecy! <laughs> you must just don't begin to regain consciousness. Oh man! Yeah, sorry guys. You can find everyone staring at you. Where was the last of its kind on Earth? Now it's gone forever. So oh, Jesus, should pay better attention. Any mistakes? I'm sure I'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Alright. At lunchtime, that's where we're going to... Oh, jeez. Oh, we made it like halfway through. Alright, 
Yep. Since I'm raid somebody, I've got two people. Let's see. Let us see who we can find. Do you have someone in mind, Panic? Man, I'm sorry guys, I just, I don't know why I'm so tired. A mighty raid squad of two. Shall certainly be the most imposing of squads. Um, milk or cream? Trying to figure out if they're still going. Because if they are, then we'll do that. I can't find out. I guess you're you're also in there. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, dream of chicken. Oh, oh, I will dream of chicken. And we will finish this at some point. I don't know when, but at some point, we'll finish this game. Uh, tomorrow is Smash Brothers, so be on the lookout for that. Um. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching this. As always, it's greatly appreciated. Bundy, thank you so much for that 13 months. As appreciated as well. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen. And Flyboy, it's good to see you. It's been a bit. Uh, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, this stream is adjourned. I have to say.